G'day YouTube, 1MJ here, welcome back. Well, Sunday morning here in Australia and I found a, a pretty cool article that I think is really interesting. So it's from the Daily Hoddle and it says $528,000 worth of Bitcoin uh, from the Satoshi Nakamoto era moves for the first time in 10 years. So, you know, a little bit of speculation, was it Satoshi Nakamoto? Look, uh, some people might sort of think it is, but uh, there's a number of people that think it's probably not. And so basically what's happened is a Bitcoin address just facilitated its first transaction in 10 years, sparking discussions about who held on to the asset for a decade. According to the data from blockchain.com, the wallet came to life on October 1st as its owner moved 50 BTC, currently valued at just over sort of $528,000. The crypto tracker notes uh, that the wallet's only other transaction is from 2010 when it received the 50 BTC on May the 25th, 2010 from Coinbase, uh, which is a term for mining rewards and doesn't refer to the popular exchange of the same name. So basically someone mined this uh, and then they moved uh, those coins back in 2010. Now that's very, very early, uh, but a lot of people uh, who've been around in the game for a while uh, don't think that this is uh, Satoshi Nakamoto himself. This is a someone else. But imagine holding 50 BTC for that long. So we go, uh, we continue on. Accordingly, mining rewards in 2010 were still in their initial stage of 50 BTC per block. The BTC is believed to have been sent to the crypto exchange Bitfinex. So that's very interesting. Uh, considering everything that's kind of happening with Bitfinex at the moment, 50 BTC have been sent over there. So uh, an unusual uh, move, but uh, there you go. Shows that people are sort of holding on for Bitcoin for a really, really long time. What's going to be interesting is, you know, what do they plan on doing with the BTC? Are they planning to sell or are they planning to, you know, swap into other, you know, cryptocurrencies at the moment? That'll be very interesting to see what happens. But uh, Jimmy Song, uh, he's been around for a while and you can look at him on Twitter and all the rest of it. Uh, he basically said that these coins are not connected to the blocks that are believed to be mined by uh, Satoshi Nakamoto himself because he was mining, uh, you know, back in sort of 2009 and maybe still in 2010. But very, very interesting though that they have been moved after such a long time and that they've gone to the BitMEX exchange. So... You know, we'll have to wait and see. And I mean, even if 50 BTC were, you know, as some people would say, dumped on the market, that's not going to make that much of a difference. And I believe that will be bought up quite quickly. But to move them to BitMEX, considering, you know, what's going on there, that's an interesting move. So we'll just have to wait and see. Now, obviously, you know, at the moment, there's a lot of fear in the market, you know, with things going on like, you know, Bitfinex uh, and the charges that are being put up against them, you know, President Trump getting corona and what's going to happen. But here's something that might give us a little bit of perspective. So DeFi Pulse, we are at nearly $11 billion locked up in DeFi at the moment. A lot of that is sort of stable coin sort of stuff. And I think the stable coins even goes even higher again. But considering all the, you know, this news that's been going on this is what DeFi continues to do just keeps growing and just keeps growing and just keeps growing yep we had a big dip here and guess what happened traveled sideways for a bit and everyone bought in a little bit of a dip and again it just keeps getting bought back every time it dips and this time was a real small kind of dip and it's just being bought back so not that long ago we're talking back in July there was only $2 billion invested in DeFi. And we're talking only a couple of months later, there's 10 billion. This is what tells me that this market is just gonna to continue to grow and continue to grow and continue to grow. Now that's $10 billion out of a total market cap of 310, 341 billion. So that's minuscule in the market cap but it is exponentially growing and that is going to continue to make this grow. Will we have pullbacks? Absolutely. We can see here in the last seven days, we had a really good pullback, but I don't think this market is going anywhere. I think it's going to continue to grow and grow and grow. 
And we go over to the charts, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I truly believe what MicroStrategy did in buying Bitcoin is still occurring. Yes, we have some pumps up and some pumps down, but look at this, that 10,500 is holding so strong at the moment. Does that mean it can't go lower? No, but I just don't see it going much lower. We can see that we wick down and we bounce perfectly off this you know, big major trend line here. And I believe that's gonna to continue to happen. I don't think we're gonna go much below this. Again, unless some you know, really bearish sort of news happens. And there's people saying that you know, we're gonna go down to 9,000 and you know, maybe even test $7,000 and $8,000. Is that possible? Yeah, look, anything's possible, but that would have to mean something really drastic in the market happened. And again, I truly believe the micro strategy uh, Bitcoin purchase method is being adopted by other big uh, major buyers. They're just waiting for the waiting for these small dips, and every you know sort of few seconds or so, they're buying up the Bitcoin. Now, I don't think you know massive amounts of companies are doing that at the moment, but I think some of the smart ones who are going to be considered the early adopters, along with you and me, are doing exactly that. What I think it's going to take for, you know, the money to really start to pile in is we need to break this. So it's around about kind of that $13,800. let us just round it up and say $14,000 level. If Bitcoin can get up and break that $14,000 level, and look, that's not that much. I think we'll do it, you know, probably by December, late December, if not a late December, sort of early January. And once that gets cracked, I think we'll quickly jump up to that sort of $20,000 level and it'll just really start to steamroll. Now, first of all, for the really big institutions, they need more regulation. They need certainty in the markets. They need to know that they're safe and all the rest of it. And all those regulations are coming and we've been talking about them and I spoke about them. The CFTC, they're getting involved. You know, there's regulations all over. You know, banks are allowed to custody crypto for people now. You know, there's so much regulation and all that coming in and we just don't want it to be over-regulated, but we definitely need regulation. Once that stuff gets sorted and there's a Bitcoin ETF, which looks like it's just getting closer and closer. I think there's one in the Bahamas that's looking at being set up, but we need a fully regulated one. And I can't tell you exactly when that's gonna happen, but I do think it's coming. Once we see things like that, I think we are going to see these prices start to skyrocket. I think we're going to start to see moves like this and moves like this. These are coming. I just can't tell you exactly when. But I think once we crack that, once we get over that $14,000 mark, that's when really big institutions and that are going to pay attention and they're going to be like, all right, this thing is legit and it's on. Uh, and then again, we'll quickly get past that $20,000 mark. And then where we go after that, you know, it's really, really hard to say, you know, my personal belief is, you know, somewhere around that kind of $100,000 mark, maybe sort of 150,000 if, if we're sort of lucky, but you know, plan B, he's come out and, you know, had his uh, S2F uh, model out there. And, you know, he's predicted possibly $288,000. So, you know, we'll have to wait and see. That'll be quite some move from where we are. That's basically sort of, you know, a sort of 20x from where we are. Possible, likely. Mm, yeah, I don't know. We'll wait and see. I'll, you know, I'd love to. I'd love for him to be right. I can tell you that right now. I'd be stoked. But me, I'm sort of more thinking somewhere around the $100,000 mark might be the peak of this. Uh, possibly even uh, under 100000 but look, again, that, that's just a sort of bit of a rough estimate. It, it's hard to say, you know, we're at around about sort of, well, you know, $9,000, $8,000 around the halving. So if we 10x from there, that gets us to, you know, $90,000. And then maybe we go a little bit above that. That's just what makes me think the $100,000 mark is a pretty good uh, sort of rough estimate. But maybe we go higher. Maybe we go a lot higher. Maybe we don't even get to uh, that $100,000 mark. Maybe it's more, you know, the eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 mark. Time will tell. But anyway, that's it from me. Not a whole lot of news really going on other than, you know, those Bitcoins moved and they went to uh, the Bitfinex uh, exchange. That's uh, pretty interesting. You know, what they're going to do with it, who knows. But if they are selling it and it ends up on the open market, 
Uh, I've got my buy orders in. But very interesting that it's Sunday and we've got a little bit of a green candle here. And that $10,500 mark, not exactly. It does dip below $10,500 a little bit. But that rough sort of $10,500 mark, uh, it really has been holding pretty well uh, over the last sort of week or so. So will it become uh, sort of support or will it maybe become resistance? Time will tell. Anyway, that's it from me. Have yourself a good weekend. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. There are some small gains in there at the moment. And I'll see you next time.